Hey guys, Tarkle Cyclone FPV, and uh, we are going to be doing a live feed tonight on a couple things. We're actually going to be uh, building a, sorry, building a, um, a uh, we're going to do a $100 build, which I think it's 100 bucks. Now, I mean, uh, it's going to be interesting because uh, on my initial design, it was $100, and I'm going to try to keep it there, and I think I can, but um, uh, I'm going to change some of the components out. Uh, I flew the test model already, uh, and it flew very well, so I'm really happy with that. Um, I'm going to try to make sure that I can see everything that's going on here. Bear with me a second. Hey, what's up, Bryce? Okay, so don't forget, guys, we have a small delay. i got to turn the volume down here. Sorry. One second. Okay. Um, what's up, Rudy? Ricardo, everybody, how y'all doing? Um, hey, I'm just going to I'm gonna interject here real quickly, uh, and I'll do it like this. So bear with me a second because I need, obviously, you know me, guys. I'm always needing somebody's help. So now it's... Me who needs a little bit of help here, and I will try to do this as best I can. So, as many of you know, I'm doing some stuff for my kids, and I usually have my tape on here, but I, I clean... Oh, that beeping means my wife is home, so we will have a small interruption while I say hello to her. Um, but bear with me, I'm just getting the bench ready. I need to get my center set also. Um, so hang tight a second while I do this, and let's see what we got. I better go get those doors to open too. One second, guys. Don't want to make the wife mad by not letting her in the house. So let me get these doors open. There we go. I hope that's her. I heard the beeping go off. Okay. Um, so as you guys know, I'm always uh, needing some help with a few things and uh, obviously involving my kids. I will ask if you guys can please take some time and go to... Hey! Wanna say hi? We just started. Yeah, my mom got you a present. Ooh, what'd I get? What'd I get? <laughs> what the hell is that? It's finger bandages. Because <laughs> you're always finger bandages. Fingers, so. oh, tell your mom thanks. I'll tell her thank you. She said they thank didn't you, have Denise. Stuff, I know so she'll probably see it. She's like, they didn't have the stuff, so I got them bandages. How you doing? I'm good. Sorry. How do you mm -hmm. feel about a big favor for me? A coffee? Yes. <laughs> you got you it. You know me. I love you. I love you. All right, mom. I'll see you out here in a minute. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, guys. So getting back to uh, where we were at, uh, we've got. Um, uh, okay, so yeah, a couple things. Uh, one thing is, I, I did they bit? Yeah, I let them. I, I took them outside. Oh, okay. Ooh, I almost got in trouble for the dogs. Uh, there's poop everywhere, by the way. Hey, I'm on a live feed. A buck a luck -a. Sorry. Okay. Um, so uh, if you guys um, get a chance, please, please go to the website uh, fight for uh, dads dot com. Um, and the exclamations are just me. Please uh, go there and you can check us out at si uh, facebook.com forward slash fight for dads. Uh, please, there's some videos on there. I could use some support on this or at least input. Uh, all right, I'm not going to focus on that. That's not our focus of the video, but I did want to at least put that on there uh, because I usually have the tape out here um, and I need to get rid of, uh, I need to do this, move myself there, and then you can see the address better. Okay, so that being said, uh, we have some live builds to do, uh, and need to send you the vid I did for... Oh, yeah, man, I want to see that. I want to see the uh, final. Hey, Dustin, how's it going, guys? All right, so I won't waste anybody's time here. Um, we are going to look at the $100 build. And let me grab the $100 build and show you what it, what ended up, what it ended up like. Um, sorry, I was cleaning up here again, as always. So let me find where I put it. It is on the other side of the room. Let me grab that real quick. All right. So here's what I did. Um, this is the $100 build right here, right? And this is a uh, real ACC frame. Uh, these are uh, Emacs motors with Emacs ESCs. Now on mine, I did a NACE 32 board because like I've told many of you, that is my favorite board. I really like the NACE 32 and I find that it's a great board to train yourself on. Uh, oh, oh, uh, what? Oh, uh, okay, let me see. Um, see if that works, if that's better. Um, uh, oh, top right. Man, I don't know this stuff. All this jibber jabber, Facebook, don't know where to put the pictures and everything. There, that says better. Okay, whatever. There we go. All right, so, anyways, that's my thing. So, I put an external VTX and the camera and the antenna, and it, I flew it, and it flew great. I mean, it was fine. It needs some tuning, uh, but it flew without any issues. And I'll be honest with you, I believe, and I'm going to go check real quick, real quickly right now. Let me go to, I'm going to pull up a website here, and then I'll, I'll bring you guys to it here. But uh, 
Bear with me one second. Um, oops. Need to turn this on. I hope this is right. Okay. Let me see if I'm on. There we go. All right. So let me do this. Uh, let me see if I can find this. Uh, there we go. I'm going to see if Banggood still has this deal. Um, okay, so there was a deal, and I guess I'll show you here. Let me see if I can get this on here. Whoops. Bear with me a second. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I like to be very transparent about what we do uh, and not and make sure you guys know that I don't just blow bull up everybody. Uh, I'll, I'll bring it back here um, in just a second. You'll see the drone here in just a second in case you missed it. Uh, but let me see if I can get this to pull up on the web real quick. So let's see if I can add this computer screen. I think I can. And if I do, boom, there we go. So you should see it here in just a second. And uh, there it is. Okay, so I'm on Banggood's website, right? And there's a reason for this because Banggood's like the... Okay, so you see this setup right here? Um, this is part of the kit, all right? And this is what I'm trying to... Uh, this is what I'm trying to get across to you guys is that... Um, now I'm covering the kit. I can't win wherever the hell my face goes. There's a problem here. Um, so, uh, if you see this, this is part of the stuff that I'm doing. Now, it's going to be the 2205, 2300 KV, or 2600 KV. Just that four motors in ESC alone on Banggood's website is $89.99. That's what's on this build for 100 bucks. okay? So, uh, I want you guys to see that, uh, okay, so it's the Emax motors, if you can see that right there, and then the Emax ESC that comes with it is 30 amp ESC, okay? So... What I'm, I guess, you know, my thing is that some people are like, well, man, is it even any good? I'm like, well, look, I mean, if you can't fly, then no, it's not going to make you fly. And you have to know what you're doing. But is it good? Yes, it's very good. And uh, it was good with the Nase 32 board. So, but here's the thing. Uh, I was going to change it to the F3 V4 Pro from HDLRC. I have not tested that to see if it fits properly yet. So we're going to have to find out. If it does, great. If not, then we're going to stick with this build. But I can promise you that for 100 bucks, it's a steal. All right, uh, and all it does is I just go through my inventory and I um, and I find things that I just need to move, you know, in a in a bundle. It's sometimes people don't just need one thing; they need you know a combination of stuff. So I do that, and you get to save. Um, so just understand that you're not nobody's getting ripped off by any means. Uh, you're actually saving quite a bit. Um, now uh, I am going to. Um, I do not know what camera yet. We're going to figure that out tonight. Okay, we're going to go through everything tonight because there is a limited quantity of some of these things. So I don't want to tell everybody you're getting one specific thing. So as of right now on this $100 build, uh, and I think I have more frames, but I got to check. I have about 400, 300 frames maybe, but I don't know if I have of this particular one. So it's very possible I'll have to change frames uh, at some point in this build. Uh, I may limit this to like eight uh, eight builds. Thanks, Mama. You're welcome. Are you going to be up? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, babe. Love you. Love you. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Well, I, oh. well have a good time. Okay, thanks. Whatever you say. Well, I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So that's that. Uh, let me, I'm just taking these off because I'm really curious about the room uh, that we will have on here. Uh, hey. I see Chad online. What's up, Chad? Man, I gotta tell you, it was fun having uh, Nikki and Bryce down here. Hope to meet you one day, but that was probably come up there, I guess, because I want to fly on that acreage you got. But uh, uh, you want one of the builds? Okay, so look, here's the deal. I counted eight frames plus this one. Um, I think this one's gonna be spoken for. Uh, I'm going to actually. There's a gentleman, Ron, that I um, uh, fly with. I, I saw him tonight. He's got a great son, uh, and uh, and I think he's gonna do one of these for his son. So. I'm going to reserve this one probably for him, uh, which means that I counted eight frames, okay, guys? And i got to open these and make sure everything is legit because these are the frames uh, that I had from a while ago to test out. So let me just open this up and make sure everything is good on it and that we are set. Okay, so yes, we are set. Um, so let's go ahead and just dump the contents out, okay? Um, and now... The, the, the caveat here, the, the problem actually, it's not caveat, the problem is that if I build this one, it will be a built model to send to somebody and not a DIY. So I guess someone's gonna luck out. So 
long as you don't mind me building it for you, um, you know, that's it. So, sorry, I'm thirsty. Oh, darn it, I'm thirsty. Okay, so this is the frame right here. Uh, and um, I'm gonna put that aside now and we're gonna build one, right? So, um, once we build it, I'll activate the link. As soon as I'm done, I'll activate a link on the website to sell them. I counted eight frames, which means there will be eight for sale. Uh, the first eight people to get them will get them. That's it. After that, I'll pull another build and another frame. So it's not the end of the $100 builds. It's just the end of this series. And they're all going to be comparable. So don't think like, hey, I'm going to hold out for one that's better than the other one. Yeah, they're all going to be right around the same. The idea is to make something affordable for you guys, okay? But this is the first time I'm actually doing this on the fly without knowing what components I'm going to use. This does come with a PDB, and it's a good one, so uh, that's good. Hi, <laughs> Dustin. All right, Dustin, you're right. You know what? That's fine. Uh, and I know I spoke to you before anyway. All right, guys, so here we go. Um, going off of this model here, this is kind of a puzzle. But let's go ahead and just lay this out. All right, so we got our, our four arms. I hope you can see that, right? Yeah? Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. Kind of darn it, there we go. Okay, so let's zoom out, there you go. Can you read that, yeah? Okay, I think so. All right, um, we got our PDB. Uh, I didn't use this, this is for the base of your battery. I didn't use it, it's cool to have, I guess, but it's kind of a waste for me. I didn't find it necessary. Um, all right, we got our PDB, we got our tarp top piece, our side pieces. Where is the other one? It is somewhere here. I don't know where I put it. Um, and let me see what else. Well, oh yeah, here it is. Okay. So one, two, blam. That's it. Okay. And they are nice enough to give you some wire and even a lipo strap. Okay. There's your kit, right? So let's get started. Um, I'm going to go off of what I did here because I made some changes on here. I want to make sure I'm, I copy exactly what I did. Uh, okay, so uh, first thing we're going to do is we'll take our um, arms and we'll go ahead and assemble these. Let me get the screws. Where are the screws that came with this? Here. So you get your landing pads. I believe these came with it and the standoffs came with it. Um, I don't know about the screws. Though. I'm trying to figure out if they had them in there. Or maybe they're in here. I don't know. But we're going to go ahead and take all this junk out, get rid of all the plastic bags, and get started. Okay. And so watch this, watch this. Hey, hey, what's up guys? Uh, let's go ahead and you guys can use this video then if you do get it to build your own and get started. Now I am going to pull, I guess what I'm gonna do is use my own screws on here because what they give you is not necessarily what I would use screw wise. So, Make sure you have some. I guess I'll, I'll try to make sure that I include some in there. I don't know. I'll check the rest of the packages. Um, but, but what I did here is I'm just going to look off of mine. Uh, so we are going to use, let's see, that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's use a 12. Uh, the red screws are 12 millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and use a 12 millimeter screw. All right. And I am going to do it just like this. So let's knock it out. 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter, and then we'll put the bottom plate. All right, and let me see, because the gap here is for your lipo strap, so that'll work. And 12 millimeters should be pretty good. If you want to use a locking nut, you'd want to use 14, so let me just go to 14. Sorry guys, all the beeping that's going, pinging that's going on, that's just messages and stuff. Apologize. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So we'll be doing 14 millimeter screws on the arms. And I'm just going to kind of leave them loose for right now uh, because what we are going to do is we are going to send another 14 from my notes right here. It looks like we're sending a 14 through. So let me send a 14 through or it may be actually, yeah, it's going to be a 14 through. So I'm going to send another 14 through, but it'll go this way this time. And that's because it's going to go into the uh, PDB. Uh, and here's our PDB right here. And on the PDB, what I believe they intended to do with this, let me make sure that's where I did because I put a plate under there. So they gave you a G10 FR4 plate, and as most of you know, I love this material. So on the G10 FR4, if you lay it down flat, 
then the PDB can touch the material, right? If you do not do that, you would short it out onto the carbon fiber. But if you do it like this, then you can go ahead and that shouldn't be a problem. So now I assume I'm going to go ahead and put this one on here. I'm gonna see if this will fit. It should. And I should be able to put another board on top of that if it clears. We'll see real quickly, okay? So again, this is one of those things where we're just gonna build it as we go. Um, but we will have an end result that will make sense, okay? Because I'm gonna use a different board. I can't copy what I did on the other one because we're changing the board up. Let's go 14. Go down here, use a locking nut on this side. Okay, and again, these are gonna stay kind of loose. And then I'm just gonna put another 14 in on this way, uh, which goes through the, and I may go bigger on that one. Maybe I'll go with the taller, um, I'm not sure I like that. So let me see if I go this way, let's see, 14 plus, we wanna go another spacer, and then we go five millimeters, 19, plus the board, 21. Let's go with a 25. This way we should be able to go all the way through and have one screw that goes to the flight controller and then bolts down. Now, if my numbers are right, that should work pretty good. So we will now take these, what the hell are these? Yeah, I don't like this. I'm gonna take something like this here. So we'll use a 14 and a nylon five millimeter standoff. All right, just like that. Now that should fasten us down to where we can then put the flight, yeah, that's gonna work perfect. All right, so 14 and 25 it is. So let's do that. Oh, I love my little screwdrivers here. These are awesome, or whatever you call these things. They're great. All right, so that's gonna hold pretty well and that's gonna keep everything in place. And the, like I said, the PDB won't short out. So that's good to go. So we're just gonna go finish putting these arms on real quick. And the rest of this build should be pretty simple. Uh, I'll show you guys exactly what you need to do. Uh, and we will take it from there, okay? So let's do another one. Now the 14 and the 25 millimeter screws that I have are the same color. They're all colored green, okay? That's how I can tell the difference uh, between the colors real quickly. So if, if, I, if I do not find that they've included the screws on this, then I will make sure to include them and you will get them and you will have those colors. So just understand that they're gonna look the same, but they're color wise, but they're not the same by any means. Now let me see if I can get this. I'll loosen some of these up real quick. There we go. Perfect. 14 in first, I guess. Wait for these to line up. All right. Well, there you go. Don't tighten it then first. Too tight, I cannot get this piece to go in. Let me loosen that up a little bit. There we go. Now we got everything good. Okay, so the last arm is in. <clears throat> Let's lock that down. Okay, uh, we'll send the 25 millimeter from the bottom up. Put in the nylon standoff, and you'll be good to go. Okay, hopefully that is making sense. And guys, if you have any questions about this build while I'm doing it, let me know, though I'm not looking up at the screen that much. At least I can try to help you the best I can. But this video, I promise, if you go back and watch it later, if you do get one of these, it'll make a lot of sense. Okay, so now we've got our PDB set, right? And um, there we go. Let me clean up a little bit. Okay. All right. So, so far, it's pretty good. And I'll tell you what, this is five millimeter arms. It's, it's pretty sturdy frame. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Uh, all right, so now we need to get the flight control, okay? 
and we need to prepare the board. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my solder machine on. And guys, look, I'm gonna tell you, and I think Bryce here, you can vouch for this, is that, um, you know, guys, when I tell you things like, or when I recommend, sorry, I, when I recommend things like using flux pens and using the right solder, I promise you it makes a big difference. And I've been getting a lot of solder work in here uh, where people who are not using that, and it, it, it's, it shows. It's like, I promise you soldering is easier when you have the right equipment, okay? So first thing is uh, the Kester 63, uh, 6337. I think my label is ripped off here by accident during unpacking. This is on Amazon. As a matter of fact, if you guys are watching this, hold on a second. Let me just do this because I feel like, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This would be a great time to do the following one, okay? Watch. So I was just doing this for Jose earlier, uh, yesterday, I think. So let me just show you guys what we were doing here and maybe this will help okay so here look we're gonna go back here and we're gonna go to the cyclone website real quick okay and when you go to the uh yeah you see bryce it does right okay so when you go to the cyclone website um i want you to go to uh uh is it tutorials tutorials beginners and then go to tools and supplies okay now i did this because a customer had asked me to put uh, a bunch of the stuff what i use and where i get it from so i just go this route and i promise you you'll find everything you need so first uh, the flux pen click this link. I'm just going to open it in a new tab. So I don't lose my page uh, This is on Amazon. This is it buy that. It's awesome. Okay, the uh, tweezers um, I use these ones and they're awesome. They're cheapies and they're awesome perfect set And as you can see this one right here is this one right here. Okay, I don't know if you see that but there it is and that's it uh, I don't use all of theirs, but the set is cheap enough to get it. Okay now um, going to the solder, this is important. Um, right here, as a matter of fact, I need to order another one. I'm gonna order two more because I'm out. So let me add this to cart and I guess I'll check out in the minute. Um, I don't know what the third item is, but at least it's in my cart now. Okay, so uh, that solder is critical. All right, let me go back there and show you. That is the Kester 6337, okay? So you will want a soldering pen. This is a must. Uh, tweezers, excellent, excellent idea. Uh, and I use that for my wiring solder right here, perfect. And then as far as everything else goes, um, the hot glue gun, everything else is here, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the corrosion X. I was gonna see if I had all the screws that I use, I buy on Amazon, they're all links right here. Um, I don't have the soldering machine, I guess, uh, which I think it's cause it really doesn't matter. You can use whichever one you want, but um, getting back to this, uh, on that Kester, right, when you use 6337, make sure to use your temperature at about, and I use, I'm using in Celsius, so 360 degrees Celsius, okay, which is about 600 and, let's see, it's like what, 360 plus, I think it's two, it's plus two something, zero plus 275 maybe or something like that, it's like 630, I don't know, I don't know, but uh, in Fahrenheit, but in either case, 360 Celsius is, maybe that's 625 Fahrenheit, I can't remember, but, uh, or 635. Anyways, whatever it is, 360 Celsius. Go we'll punch it into Google and do the conversion yourself, but that on Kester is very good. And uh, as you will see here, and I'm gonna show you, please make sure to not overheat your board when you're soldering. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. And to do that, I have to change camera angles now because my blind old eyes need uh, the old man goggles right here. So I'm gonna use those and then clean them off real quick. Uh, but use that. Um, uh, you know, just use those links. And if you guys have recommendation, uh, uh, feel free to let me know. Um, what is the TS100? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't, sorry, Rudy. What is, is that a soldering machine or maybe drawing a blank here? Oh wait, was that, is that something I already showed? Sorry, if I'm drawing a blank, I apologize if I'm not realizing what you're putting, I apologize. Been a long day. Today's the first day of school for my boy, so been a little bit of a long day. All right, uh, getting to this now. I need the microfiber cloth to clean this and we're gonna get started, okay? All right, so when you're using the flux pen, for those of you that are not familiar with it, when you use a flux pen, um, uh, 680, okay. All right, so here's the flux pen right here and I usually just run it on the table or run it on here or run it on carver and make sure that I've got some coming out. I don't know if you can see that, so I'll put it on this side. You can see that it's coming out, so it's good, okay? Now here's what I do. I go on all the pads and I, just like I'm coloring it in, okay? Just get in there and don't worry about it. Just put your flux on there, okay? 
All right, now, um, as you can see on this PDB, you have two pads here, two sets of pads. Uh, on this side is five volt, and on this side is 12 volt. So we're gonna use those uh, depending on how we are going to connect our board, all right? Um, the next thing we wanna do is, if we're gonna use the F3V4, then we need to decide if we are gonna put our um, uh, XT60 here or on the other board, because let me grab an F3V4 Pro and show you what I'm talking about. So this is an F3V4 Pro, okay? It's one of my most used boards. Um, I have had a lot of success with it. Uh, and you know, I, I, don't, I like it, period. So that's that. Um, so on this board, uh, you have the option, you have your XT60s here. Now, uh, your, your, your pads right here. So what you can do, uh, oh, that's it, okay, the, the, the soldering iron. Yeah, I use the, um, I use the uh, XTS5040, but look, all that matters to me is that uh, if you can just make sure you're getting the right temperature, hell, uh, that's it. And you'll see when I burn, when I solder this, how I make sure not to burn it. Um, so if we're not, if we're going to put the XT, if we're going to put the XT60 here, and this is going to be a bottom mount battery, then you can put it here on these cables. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to basically link uh, uh, the 12 volt to here, and we can run the 12 volt pads to here, and then from here we can power the camera and everything else. Um, and this will also do your conversions down. So uh, I think the best thing to do is to jump off these pads, the 12 volt, and jump right onto these pads here, and we'll be set. Okay, so we'll put our XT60 here. So to do that, we've already put our flux on here, right? And now we're going to get our Kester. And I'm, I was going to do this today, so I'm going to, uh, well, I'll do it later. Let me just get the solder out, and here we go. Okay, so here we go, guys. Let's get started. Time to make this come together. All right. Make sure you guys are on camera here. I don't want to, I don't want to lose. Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply our solder to the uh, terminals here. And there's a couple ways you can do this. What I tend to do is, uh, and I want you to learn to keep your fingers on the board. If your fingers get too hot, you can't keep them on there. Your board's too hot. Okay. So this is a great way to make sure you don't overheat your board. Oh, and I wanted to show you that real quick. So what you'll do is when you get your solder down here, uh, just kind of run the soldering iron around and you see how that kind of gets a solder on the edge there um, um, Let's see if I can zoom in on that. Okay, so uh, it's kind of blurry I guess but okay Yeah, so you see how you can see that it's it's through right? It's not closed yet So as you're doing that and you're spinning it around quickly cross over the center with it Right and you'll slowly close that gap and go in a circle and there you go now. It's sealed off Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll come over here and let me zoom out and I'm going to tin my wire now. Okay, so let me go ahead and tin that. Uh, that's a, it's already tinned actually, I didn't realize that. So uh, even though it's tinned, I am still going to put some of my solder on there because I noticed that manufacturers, when they solder, it's usually just a dip and they dip it into this pot and that solder is like, it melts at a much higher temperature. So rather than sit there all day long, now you have two options here. This is going to be kind of a long wire I didn't even think about, but for the sake of this build, I'm going to leave it long because I don't know if you how you guys want to do yours. Um, actually, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, screw that. I'm just going to cut it because that, that, that won't help anybody. Um, this, yeah, I'm sorry. I should have I should have looked at that ahead of time. Um, I'm going to, these are uh, heat shrinks and I cut them to meet a certain length. So this one is a 50 millimeter. This way I can always just use it and slide it on there and know what length I'm getting. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to 50 millimeter. That'll probably still be a little long. Uh, let me see if I can get a little shorter. Maybe I have a shorter one. I like to have all my cuts precise. So, and because the battery, um, yeah, I'm gonna go shorter. So I'm gonna to go to 40. So let me put this down. This is a 40 millimeter heat shrink. So like I said, I just cut it at 40 millimeters. I measured it, cut it, and then just wrote the number 40 on there. Let me go ahead and cut that real quick. Yeah, I said flux. Thank you. All right. So now we're at 40 millimeters to be better. So we're going to go ahead and strip this. And now this is where another item that I keep <coughs> my solder paste. Uh, it's kind of nasty looking. All I do is use this to dip wires in when I'm going to tin them. All right. So I don't put this on the boards or anything. Um, so once I strip the wires before I twist them up, I will go ahead and uh, dip them in here. Right. And get it kind of nasty looking. And this stuff is it's, it's kind of nasty, I guess, but anyways, I'll do that. 
put that aside. And now I'll twist them up, but I want to make sure to get this all in the wiring, right? All in the strands. And then I get this crap off my hands because this stuff's just gross. So there we go, little alcohol wipe right there. And now we're gonna tin these, okay? And so to tin them, one of the things I do is I take my um, strippers here and I will put the XT60 inside. And I'll just take a rubber band and there. That's my little grip, okay? That's my little gripper to hold that in place. Cheap, easy, two seconds, okay? So here we go, let's just tin this. And to do that, you're just gonna basically bring your solder around it and make sure to cover all the way around, all right? And then go to the other side. And you'll see that flux bubble up a little bit. That's no big deal. That's the way it's supposed to work. There it is, all right? Now, I am not the kind of person that will send, uh, will pass through the wires through any holes, even if they're uh, hole through connections, I still won't do it. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna connect it through to the top and, I, and here's how you do this, okay guys? So just, there's no pressure to this. There's no, you don't have to push anything hard. Just put the wires down right there and just rest your solder iron on it. And because you've got good solder, just rest it. It'll automatically spread and bond with the other solder that you put down for pre-tint, okay? And that's it, all right, that's all. Done. Now I'll put a little bit more once it's finished. I'll put a little bit more on the top. Right now I'm just trying to get it to bind, uh, to bind to the other one. There it is. All right. There. It's clean. It's solid. Now I'll come over the top of it and just kind of reinforce it a little bit. <clears throat> so here we go. And that's just to make sure that I get all the sides even. And again, keep your fingers here. And you'll see if the board gets hot, then you've been on it too long. This should be seconds, okay? Literally just seconds of touching up, all right? And making sure the soldering comes out nice and smooth. All right, because as it melts, this Kester or 6337 melts very fast. And it's, it's very easy to work with and shape. So you can just make a nice smooth uh, solder here and it will hold very well. And I'm just about done, okay? And this board is not, I don't, I'm not feeling anything right now. This board's good, everything's good. All the solder's on well. There, that's it. So there's the end result. All right, and these are solid. So that's, there's no problem there. Everything looks good on the other side. Now, what I will do, and I did not flux this part yet, but let me go ahead and do that real quick. What I will do is I'll close off the bottom just because I don't like having that there. I like to at least bring the bottom to solder connect. So let's do this. And so here goes very quickly. Now, when you're, when, it, when it's kind of, don't give a chance for the flux to dry yet, it may give you a little bit of a hard time adhering with the solder to the board, but don't worry about that. Just do the same thing, just go around it in a circle like that. Close that off. Let's do it again. Just get it on there. <clears throat> cool. And then just put it on that circle and cover it up. And just like we did the other side, we're now finished. The bottom is closed. The top is well done here. It's, it's everything is set in nicely and you're done. So that part's done. Now we're gonna pretend <clears throat> the rest of the uh yeah good night bud uh thanks for joining us though and we'll, we'll see you around soon okay um now we're just going to pretend the rest of the board so let's go to our five volt pad and again it's very simple just drop it on there and get off there you go there you go and we'll go to our 12 volt pad let me zoom out a little bit here okay you're i mean all you're trying to do is just put a very thin layer once you uh uh, put a pre tinned wire on there, it'll adhere with no problem. Okay, we're going to do the rest of the pads now. And remember, keep your fingers on the board. If the board gets hot, you'll know that you need to give it a break. And I believe that you can finish this whole board without really having to give it a rest. When you have the right solder, you just kind of paint it on there. It's really much easier. I can promise you that I've, I've had the wrong solder and it just seems like nothing goes right. Uh, all right, almost done. And this PDB will be 100% finished. Okay. Okay, one last one, and we're done. And from there, what we will do now, there we go. All right, so the board is now completely 
done. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, let me see what I'm going to do about this ESCs and motors. So I didn't want to open a new one. I don't have to, and I believe I have a, a used one already open, but yeah, I guess I'm going to open a new one. All right. Hold on. What are these? One, two, one, two, one, two, three, five, four. Ah. All right. Well, I'm going to have to open a new set, so let me go ahead and do that real quick. Um, oh, here they are. Okay, there's the motors. All right, give me one second. I'm going to go grab a new set of those Emacs. <sighs> Okay, so this is a brand new box. So, you know, if somebody does get this build, this one that I'm doing, at least you know you're getting brand new stuff. Uh, I mean, all of it's new, but I know it's different. So, um, here it goes. son Jaden is the big Lego guy and he always I always have his Lego dudes watching so there's my Lego guy I don't know if you can yeah there he is hi Jaden there he is he looks like he's in pain but we're gonna leave him right there for now sorry forgot to put him there earlier for some reason okay so let's go ahead and open this all right David we'll see you we'll see you'll see you y'all have a good night I know it's late guys I just it's the only time I had <laughs> sorry I know it's a pain all right so um what are these ones these are going to be the 2600 KVs, okay, and if you get these to the 2300s, they're going to be pretty much the same as far as what to do, so just follow this one and you'll be set. And pay attention because these are clockwise and counterclockwise, I believe, so you need to make sure you put them on the right way, I believe. I'm going to check real quick. I can't remember actually if they did that or not. I think the race spec was it, but these were... Okay, so here's your four ESCs. Uh, wait a minute. I don't think I need that box. Is that the box? Mm. <laughs> Where is this thing I'm looking for? I did this before, and I'm afraid because... Last time I threw out some part, yep, see, I did that. So be careful, guys. I did the same darn thing every time I do this. Okay, so in the box is their um, clear shrink wrap for the ESCs. And I mean, I've done this every time. They're not really put anywhere special, so maybe they are and I just didn't see it. But I always seem to throw them out and then have to go dig through the trash, just like now. I don't know where I've put them, in which box or what. Not oh, here they are. Okay, so there's the other two. So make sure you get those out or else you'll be fishing through the trash like me trying to find them, okay? All right, we got our ESCs, got our motors. We've got pretty much everything ready to go. Let's go ahead and get this desk cleared off and get started. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to want to um, measure out our board or measure out our motors, right, and, and see how long the wires need to be for the ESCs. So the ESCs are going to go as follows. On the ESC here, <clears throat> let me zoom in just a little bit. Okay, so on the ESC here, uh, it's going to go pretty much like this, right? And you have your ground and signal wire here. Then you have your ground and power wire here. These are done to uh, lessen the interference. That's why the ground is coiled around it. What you are going to do is you're going to run your signal wire and your ground wire to the flight controller, wherever the heck I go oh, here, right here. Okay. So what we'll do is, um, in order to, I guess, keep this mounted, because I'm looking at that, in order to keep this kind of going the same direction, uh, the arrow is pointing this way for the board. So orientation will be this direction, unless you want to redo it and. Um, unless you want to redo it in uh, beta flight, right? So uh, the idea is 
Uh, pads one, two, three, and four are pretty much easy to find. One, two, three, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, and four is right here on the outside. So what you're basically gonna do is you're gonna mount this ESC right about here and put your positive and ground here. And then your pad, your signal pad will go on the corner right here. And then your ground can go over here if you want it to, all right? So you can have two grounds over here because this is your original ground. And we're gonna run that ground from the flight controller up anyway from the 12 volt. And uh, so you can attach from here and then the positive will go on this side, okay? So, and I'll show you how that's gonna work, but we're doing this for measurement now. So measure, measurement wise, <clears throat> measurement wise, we're gonna put this ESC, plan on putting it right about here with a zip tie going around this way, which means that if you were to make this consistent, your positive and ground are going to be, and somebody, if one of y'all would do me a favor, please, uh, because I don't think I have room for a pen here, but let me get my ruler. Okay, and no, I'll just try to grab a pen. Hold on. This needs to go in the notes, uh, but I don't have. I'll just use this. Let me grab this piece of paper. What is this notebook? Uh, these are PID tuning notes. Uh, we will be doing a PID video or two new video here in the next couple days. Uh, I worked on it tonight. All right, but for right now, we're gonna do the uh, $100 <clears throat> build on uh, eight, uh, 14, 19, and this is gonna be uh, ESC on a wire length. Okay, and we know that the XT60 wire length uh, was uh, roughly 40 millimeters. Okay, so let's see what we're gonna do on the ESCs. So the ESC uh, right here, we are going to cut the ESC uh, to where it is, and we need to put it at a safe distance. And usually the way I tell people is go to the end of where you're going to be soldering, and that's pretty much going to be a pretty good spot there. Then add five millimeters to it just in case you're, you know, if you're newer and you have a problem with the soldering or tuning. So I would say this is a safe length right here for anybody who's building this. So your wire length from the board, you are going to have 30 millimeters, okay? So that's what we're going to put for ground and positive. Wire length for positive and ground is going to be 30 millimeters. Okay. Now, I don't think I have a 30 millimeter thing, so I'm just going to make one real quick. So let's go 30 mil, which is going to be right here. I cut that. Okay. And that is now your new 30 mil. Let me go ahead and write 30 mil. Okay, and there you go. So now it's very quick and easy. You just start chopping, All right? Let me take these stickers off, slide this down. one cable that's it so now all your wires will be the same length and you don't have to sit there and guess all right so 30 and then you just run this beside it and there you go so that's going to be your esc and let's go ahead and try this one out before we do the rest of them and just make sure that we're on point so again you're going to do the same thing uh take your wire um get your nasty solder paste or flux paste i mean not solder paste sorry flux paste all right and then just angle the wires up real quick. Grab your solder and let's knock this ESC out. Uh, I will change angles here again because I know I'm going to be using the old man goggles. So bear with me. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and solder this up. Now, because this is the first one and I don't have the measurements yet, I'm just going to kind of do a run here and just make sure. Um, I think for the purpose of this, I think this is going to work out pretty well. Uh, and only because I can bend it in a little bit. So that's going to be good. Now, I do not know the length of this yet, and we'll have to just figure that out. But my guess would be that if we were to put this on, they're all going to be pretty much the same because HDLRC did space these out pretty much identical. So if we do that, 
Uh, we're talking about zip tie maybe here. So I don't think I'm going to go under the board underneath. If you want to go through the board, come out on the top, that's fine. I don't, I'm not going to do that for this build. <clears throat> well, actually, I say that, but I probably won't. So I'm just going to cut these ends off because we don't need these ends anyway. So if I want to go through the bottom like this and bring it up, assuming there's room for that, then I would say that the length of this one and well, the length of all of them is probably going to be the same. So I'm going to go with something, whatever this is right here. So let me just cut this. It's a pretty good spot. And then I'll measure it and we'll put that down as another thing. So the ESC wires are going to be about 70 millimeters. Okay. So let's put that in the notes for you guys. So ESC, whoops, ESC signal and ground equals 70 millimeters. Okay. So now we've got uh, 40, 30, and 70. All right. So let's get to it. Um, let's zoom out. And let's get started. I'm going to attach this first one because I'm curious to see how it's going to fit. So let's go ahead and uh, we've got our uh, heat shrink here. So make sure you get that ready. But you're not going to use it just yet. But you will have to put it on before you put the motors on. Or else you can put the motors, slide this on that way, and then solder. Whichever one you're more comfortable with. I'm going to do the ESC first and then figure out how long the motor wires need to be. Okay. So let me go ahead and pass this through. Or I'll actually tin these wires first. So go ahead and just kind of twist your signal and ground wire. Go ahead and just tin them up real quick because once they get that close to the board, it's not good to tin them uh, there. And I may just attach this ESC ground to the ground where it was at. I just got to make sure I've got enough. Let me make sure. So that will come around. And... We should be perfect because I will use the ground that is on the rail here for this one. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let me tin this. Yep, you're good to go. And remember, guys, you don't need more than about a millimeter and a half. I mean, two millimeters is. is way more than enough uh, of wire exposed for these okay anything more than that you can strip more down uh, off the off the wire uh, but that would only be so that you can cut the remaining wire the excess wire because if not you risk uh, this uh, touching another component on the board so I've got quite a bit here I'm just going to cut it down in half that's a good enough size All right. now let me clean this off here and there we go so we're gonna go ahead and mount this up. Make sure everything fits good. It does. Now I can easily just take the ground uh, and go to the board here, and I may do that. I don't know yet for the signal wire, but let's just go ahead and get this on here. And these are gonna be the tweezers that I said on Amazon that I use. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. And again, there's no pressure put on this. You just, just kind of just rest it on there. And it'll automatically, this, this solder is amazing, and it'll just automatically melt and bind everything together. Okay? Matter of fact, I gotta hold it a little bit better. I didn't get a good enough grip of that wire, so let me just go ahead. And... It's a little slick. When you put that um, solder paste or the flux paste on there, it can make the wire a little slippery on that silicone sheath. There you go. And we'll do the ground now. Again, just rest the soldering iron on there it'll automatically heat and spread the solder around that joint. There you go. So that's a good fit there. And then we would do the other two. I'm not gonna do those right now, but this is how the other two will go. And we'll show that in just a second. Now it's time to get the motor wires measured out and cut. And so remember these are, uh, these are from the arrow here, they're gonna tell you the direction that they go. So this is spinning counterclockwise. So this would not be, where am I at? This is gonna be motor two. So yeah, this will actually be the right motor to put on here. So we're gonna go ahead and use our counterclockwise motor and place it right here and see how long the wire needs to be. And we'll cut that and make a note of it. <clears throat> it's gonna be very short. Um, okay, so in this case, we will, I will recommend that you cut the wire. 
10 millimeters past uh, the um, heat shrink that comes with the motor, all right? Uh, and the reason for that is I want you to be able to double, you fold it back over um, because it's very close to the ESC. So just measure 10 if you want. I'm going to cut 10 or I could just kind of guesstimate. But that's about good right there. So let me go ahead and do that. And I'll make a note of that on here, 10 millimeters. And I'll type this because I know my writing sucks. So there you go. All right. So let's go ahead and strip that real quick. Okay. And again, I'm only pulling about a millimeter and a half to two millimeters of wire on this. You don't need that much. This will hold very well. I do need to tin the ESC so I can put these on, but I want to get this cut first. Okay, so there's that. Now on the ESC, you're going to use your flux pen. Get all this junk off the table, especially the metal pieces and the solder, because that stuff can get up in the in the motor. All this stuff can get up in there and then cause a problem. So make sure you cannot get it off. Make sure to get off the table if you can. Let's see if I can get this out of here. Come on. That's good enough. All right. Um, so again, you'll use your flux pen. Go ahead and just kind of paint the pads there. And then go ahead and pre-tin them. That's it. Now we've got our motor and we're just gonna tin the wires on our motor. Just like that. Just kind of set it down and rest it. It's not, this doesn't need anything special to do it. Just kind of just get the wires to where you can at least get to them. And I could have screwed it down so it would quit moving, but at this point I'm just gonna finish. But the next ones I'll probably screw down because this thing's spinning on me. Okay, that's tinned and then let's do the last one. All right, <clears throat> motor wires are tin. And I would not screw the motor down at this point. What I would do now is just use your, uh, make sure your soldering tip is clean, and then just use your tweezers and bring everything together and, uh, and make it kind of just mesh there. And sometimes I will zip tie the ESC if I feel like it's not gonna sit in place. I'll zip tie it to the board, just or to the thing. Now, at this point, if you're not done, you would want to put your, uh, piece on, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Make sure to put your heat shrink on first and just slide it all the way back here so that you can get it out of the way because you don't want the heat to start shrinking it prior to you being done. So just kind of slide it in the distance as far as you can. That's pretty good right there. All right, now back to what I was doing. Let's go ahead and get this ready. Get my soldering iron. Yeah, I will start with the center and try to get it as straight as I can. That way the two ends will go on evenly. Just hold it there like everything else. There you go. Now, now that that's connected, you can go ahead and bring either side over because they're all cut at the same length. So this way you know that they'll all be, the motor will not be whoppy jawed and the ESC will not be whoppy jawed if you do it. And we'll go ahead and put that down there. There you go. And then we'll do the other side. Okay, and there you have it. That's it. That is done. All right, so now you have a clean solder. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to zoom in here real quick. But there you go. It's very clean solder there. Uh, and everything is soldered on the other end uh, right here. Clean. This is clean. And now we'll go ahead and cover it up. So now what you want to do <clears throat> is you realize that one of these wires is going to give, and it's going to be the motor wire. That's why I said to make it just a little bit longer. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get this heat shrink done to where everything is protected. So kind of have it even on both sides <clears throat> and apply the heat to it. And let's just get it to uh, protect the uh, setup real quick, okay?
All right, now, next thing, uh, uh, next thing is, well, I tell you what, uh, Rudy, um, this frame, <laughs> believe it or not, you can do that. And I'm gonna explain to you how. Um, if you don't put the session, whoops, let me zoom out. If you don't put your session or camera right here, I actually put my battery here and flew it fine. This actually sits pretty good for the battery because I was testing that to see if it would work, and it did. So you can, you can use it as a top mount if you want to. On the other hand, they do give you this plate so that when you strap your battery in, the battery will actually go between this and the bottom like that and protect the battery. I don't use it, but it is there for that reason. All right, now I've got to put some double-sided tape. So to do that, this is actually an excellent width. And to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I get enough to cover the bottom of there. I'm going to cut that off like so. And these letters are a great way to do it. I know you guys probably know this, but the way it says Gorilla printed here, um, if you just find the letter and cut the same letter at top and bottom, you get a straight cut out of it, right? So that's how you can keep your cuts good and even. All right, I'm going to place that here. And I am going a little bit bigger in width than the ESC because I want to kind of cover a little bit more on the arm. So there's that. And now we're going to go ahead and screw the motor in. And we're going to screw the motor in so that we know exactly where to place the ESC. So let me get some motor screws out. And like anything else, you're just going to cross use the cross screws here, one on top right, bottom left, or top left, bottom right, whatever it is. This is all we need to do for right now. Okay. And from there, we can determine how this is going to sit. And it is going to sit perfect, just like this. So now I'm going to take the double-sided tape portion off. If I can see it. Okay, and I'm going to set it down perfect, or I mean as best as I can to being even right there. And there it is. And now what I will do is get like a cool yellow zip tie, I guess. And let me see. So we are going, I do my zip ties like this and Bryce will vouch for it because I'm really picky about my zip ties and heat shrink. Uh, I will do it from the outside coming in like this so that we hide the ugly part of the zip tie on the side of the inside of the arm. So let me go ahead and just put this right here. There we go. And then let me just make sure that's right there it is. Okay, and that's it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this four times or three more times. So it's gonna get a little boring here in just a minute, but <clears throat> you guys could see where we're going with this. All right, so there's one motor, one ESC, everything done. <clears throat> and on the ground, like I said, I'll decide what I'm going to do with the ground wire here in just a little bit. And then we'll get started to number two. So the wire length was uh, the wire length, ESC wire, 30 millimeters, which is the yellow one I made, I believe. Or is that 40? That's 30, so there you go. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I, it makes the biggest difference, right? Once you start getting everything measured right and get the colors right and you get, man, it's like night and day. And at that point, there's no turning back. Once you get sucked into that, you can't, you can't not do it again. By the way, save these wires, guys, because you will use these to connect the PDB to the flight controller. So there's no wasting in this setup at all. Everything can be used, all right, except for some of this crap that we don't need. All right. Let's go ahead and get these ready to be tinned. And I think what I'll do is I'll just do all the ESCs at one time now instead of doing one motor at a time. So let me just go ahead and prep the rest of them.
All right, so all the wires are put aside. And now I want to see on this one. Uh, yeah, so we're good there. On the back, I think we're good there too. So I think everything's going to run just perfect like that, okay? So uh, let's see. On the, the note says that on the signal it's 70. And so I must have had a uh, 70. I thought I did. <clears throat> that view is better but so I use the old van goggles so we can go with this view okay and then last one now you can get rid of these little scraps we don't need those All right, guys, so we got our <clears throat> USCs ready. <clears throat> now we need to just tin the wires and also tin the pads uh, on the on the ESC itself and prepare it for the motors to be attached. And then this is pretty much a quick setup in that regard. Okay, so that's one, two, three. So now go ahead and take your flux paste. One, two, all into the strands okay old man goggle time so back to this I just Place them wherever you're at and just fold those wires up. That's how you get them off the, off the table. And then just pretend. It doesn't take much to pretend these wires with this solder. It melts so fast. So you don't have to worry. You're not really, even though the board is not fastened down or stuck to the table, uh, it doesn't require much for the solder. All right, so there's one. and our last one okay there's that now we can go ahead and fasten them if we want which is what I'm going to do right now. So where is my... Here they are. Okay. Let's do... Let me make sure these strands are in there. There you go. Again, no pressure. Just let it melt. There's one.
We got one left. That's it. Not even long, so it's good. All right, so there we go. Now we've got our ESCs done, right? And uh, so we're going to make them all look like this one here. So um, the next thing we said is we were going to go five or ten millimeters past on the motor from the heat shrink, and so we're just going to duplicate that on all of them. So ten is uh, about right there. So let's just go ahead and cut that, and then ten is the same here. And then the last one. Yeah, no, not bad at all. I mean, go, I mean, you really, all you have to do is go price an F3 V4 and go price the motors. And those two alone are gonna put you over a hundred bucks. Motors ESC and the flight controller alone are over a hundred bucks. Uh, for the most part, I think pretty much anywhere you go. So, yeah, no, it's a good deal. There is definitely, uh, I, this is one of those things where like there's no money being made. It's just moving inventory. So everybody wins. Everybody wins. All right. I'm just going to strip these out, tin them, and then we're actually going to be done with the motors and ESC fairly quickly. Uh, the only other thing left is to decide what, uh, ES, uh, sorry, what receiver I'm going to use. And I haven't figured that out yet. Something fairly inexpensive, though. And if you have a Fly Sky receiver and you need something uh, Fly Sky compatible, that's fine. I'll just change out the receiver. So you tell me, and we'll make sure that your kit comes with the receiver that you need and not the wrong one. Okay, so there's one, two, All right, now, don't forget, you have to look for the arrows on these motors. And this is a counterclockwise. So there are going to be, I guess they're all kind of going to be, no, they're all going to be counterclockwise, so it doesn't matter. I remember that they had done that at some point. These kits all come with counterclockwise motors. So I guess you don't have to look at this stupid thing. Yeah, all right. So um, let's see, we'll put this here. <clears throat> screen here for you guys. Remember, all you're doing is put in two screws, okay? So just get it lined up, kind of like when you change a tire. Or whatever. What, what, what? If you have one of the hundred builds left. Oh, uh, Kelly Johnson just wrote me about the hundred dollar builds. As soon as this is done, um, the link will be put online. There will be eight of them to go um, to start. Okay, and so uh, uh, the, they'll be online. You guys can click them as soon as this is done. Please understand that um, I should I should attend this first. I'm sorry. I was really trying to jump the gun on that. Let me go ahead and attend this real quick. Uh, please understand that once those eight are sold, uh, Probably the next one will be pretty much the similar components, just a different frame, because I have plenty of the components. It's the frames that I'm running low on. So, um, uh, if you don't get, if you don't make it for this one, then there will be another one. I promise you. There's plenty of equipment in here. Bryce, you can vouch for that. You were in here last week. All right, let's just go ahead and tin this up real quick. Okay, one, 
And guys, make sure to twist the strands, right? Because you want these strands to be in there tight so, so that you don't have loose strands going out and then touching something on the board by accident. So um, if you see it when you're getting ready to tin, if there's a strand or two hanging out, stop and, and, and twist it back in there so you don't have a problem. Okay, last motor. Okay, so that's ready to be tinned. <laughs> Plenty, yes. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff, man. I got a spending problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll tin this one first. Don't forget to put your silicone, I'm sorry, your heat shrink on first so that you don't have to take everything off. Okay, there we go. So we'll really quickly pretend this these pads and then we'll solder this motor to this one. Now bring heat shrink over, center between the two, and you've got another motor ready. <laughs> no man, you can have as many kits as you want. I right, make sure you get taken care of. Trust me, there's plenty of stuff here. It just, you know, like I said, the frame may change a little bit, but uh, you're set. I mean, there's plenty to go around. I think I have like 400 of these flight controllers, okay, for example. Um, so, I mean, motors would change some at some point because I don't have many of them. Well, actually, I have a lot of the motors. It's the ESCs that would change. All right, so this one's done. So I'm going to put the double-sided tape, and then we're going to make sure that the um, zip tie matches. It's got to go on the same way. So look at your letters here when you cut. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and put two screws in, hold our motor in place. Uh, which radio are you talking about? I have the new X9 lights. Um, I'm waiting for some patches before I, waiting for some up, <coughs> updates before I sell those on the site. I took some out. Uh, by the way, I did get a bunch of Fry Sky equipment though, like, uh, I'm sorry, antennas and things if you guys need any. A lot of the T antennas and stuff. Um, but as far as the radios go, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to get more. Um, but the are the X9 lights that I have, uh, I'm not selling until they until I have a chance to test firmware updates because I'm afraid of what I've seen so far on some of that. All right, so let's get this one put down where it needs to be. And if you find, look, if you find that your motor's in a kink like this, just put your, um, whatever your tool you're using and kind of lift it up so you don't kink the wires even more and then they'll go back to being perfect, okay? They'll be, I mean, they'll go back to being fine. So there's that. Press that down. 
Make sure your wires are set. And we will take this out of here. Make sure these fold the same direction. So I would say that it needs to go that way. We can bring it in, keep it symmetrical. Just like the pipes at the factories. That's impressive stuff to see those guys. Okay, so just keep everything running nice and neat. Um, so we went on the outside. So we'll go on the outside again. All right. There we go. For now. That'll work. All right, now we put our zip tie on. And we know that we're putting our zip tie between these two spots. And the piece has to go into the inside, hide the ugly piece. So just turn it like that. Run it right there. And you should be able to should be pretty close to the other one. There it is, see? So they look good, they look somewhat identical. The wires are bent somewhat the same, and we have our ESC wires, okay? I did, you see, okay, so I've got the X-Time light, and I did the D16 update, and I did not have success with it, but it could very well just be me. I was very frustrated at that point, and practically wanted to throw it out the window. But uh, I got them in. I, I've got them there. I'm looking at them. They're right up there. As a matter of fact, I had one open. Um, so I'll check tomorrow. Oh, can you hear that? Can you hear the AC? My bad. <laughs> Oops. Hey, man, it's hot in Texas right now. Where did they? They're smoking. And I'm from Beirut. This is almost as hot as Beirut. It's tough here. All right. So, I don't know why it does that, Bryce. Now you got me wondering why it's turning on and off like that. Darn it. Okay, let's do our next heat shrink. Get rid of this crap. Keep your table clean if you can. Bryce, are you listening to that? Keep your table clean if you can. Bryce is like a drunk giraffe. Everything's everywhere. That and the little sprayer, right? The little um, fragrance sprayer that scares you. Sounds like a snake coming out of the wall. By the way, uh, yes, it is. Uh, I had to kill a snake today. Wasn't happy about it. Felt bad for it, but it was stuck to my traps. And then, believe it or not, yesterday, there was a raccoon that was suffering. I swear, I don't know why this happens to me because I'm such a big animal. Like, it kills me to see this. This raccoon was suffering. Anyways, it, it ended up being covered in fire ants, and it wasn't moving. It was breathing, but it was just getting mauled. I mean, it, it, it looked like it was in pain, and I finally had to shoot it. And it looked, do you know what it looks like when you have tattoos like me, and you walk around the front of your house in this neighborhood with a gun, and you shoot? Or <laughs> just People start running. So, anyways... I like to think that I help the raccoon suffer less and the snake suffer less. I guess I'll find out later what God says. But I don't like messing with these things. And it's traumatic. Like, I mean, I freak out. I feel bad. I just can't do it. All right, there's our other motor. We're done. Yeah, Bryce and his clean table. You walk around. If you need any screws or anything, just wait for Bryce to finish building something. You will have plenty of wire and screws and everything to go around. All right. And guys, I can't build this any faster, by the way. I know this seems to be taking a while. We are in an hour and 20 minutes, but it only goes so fast. Um, I guess I could speed build it, but then you guys wouldn't be able to. Probably wouldn't be very helpful when you're trying to watch this. So just hang in there. All right. So now we'll get our both side tape. Oh, Rudy, I think you have to swipe one direction or another. I don't know. I can barely keep up with... I can't see messages sometimes, so I'm not one to be talking, but... Hypothetically, or like Bryce says, theoretically, it should work. Oh, 
Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead. Oh crap! I meant to screw this in first. But that's all right. are going to uh, I, don't know, I kind of like them pulling in to the center like that so let's just do that and keep that pattern for now see how it goes okay so there's one more let's go ahead and put it and since this has to go this way so we're gonna put this zip tie like this and it'll go on the second row there just like that okay that should line up with the other one and they all look good. All right, one more, and that's it. Thermal Ermal. Ah, oh, man. Dude, your mom made me laugh. She cracked us up down here. Sam and I were talking about her today. She's just fun. Bryce, they're all good people. Man, we have some fun. Thermal Ermal. Hey, Bryce, is that a, who makes your receiver again? Don't make Sarah see her. Okay, and now we're gonna play the inevitable. Cannot find the last. There it is. Can never find the last one. Right. Heat shrink it is. So we're almost done, guys. At least with this part. Well, I don't know. I gotta take my gun out. I mean, and and the, and the, the best part is, the the best part is. The gun I had for that has a silencer on it. It is a, you know, you have to go through all that license and register with the firearms and blah, blah, blah to get it. But it's one of those Ruger, it's like an assassin gun. It's about that long, I guess. And it's like that much of it is a silencer. Anyways, so at least nobody could hear the gun. Or it didn't sound like Beirut down here, but it's bad enough when, when it just... I'm standing out there with it, especially that kind of a gun. But I don't know what else to do. I couldn't see an animal suffer. That killed me. So I had to do something. And it was my wife that saw it, so she's she's even more animal lover than I am. Alright. Alright guys, so that's the last motor. So I'm going to mount that real quick, and then we're going to so let me screw this in, uh, in, and then we're going to go put the double-sided tape, and we should be good. Mm -hmm. Oh, where is that, Rudy? What did you say, California? Noodles? Noodles is like not happy with me right now. She hates me. Ah, oh, man, I did it again. Hey, ATF, I got my paperwork, homie. I made sure everything's legit down here. Trust me. But yes, let them watch. I saved a raccoon from suffering. going crazy for sure. Alright, let's 
put this down. California. Oh my gosh, I had a guy order from Apple Valley, California a couple weeks ago. And I tried to reach out to him because not very many people know where Apple Valley is, but he's from, I guess he lives there because that's where I shipped his product. I went to high school there. So I was like, man, what's up? But I never heard back from him. All right, so this is our end result, which I think looks uh, very good. Let me see, so we're all gonna go, I don't know, I'll have to use that with this red and black wire. I don't know if I like them going one direction here or the same direction, or they should switch depending on where they're at. But for right now, we'll just do this. Okay, keep it looking good. Let's put our last zip tie on. This is gonna go this way. I think the build's looking good so far. It's a pretty solid build. I think this is going to be a very nice build. All right, so there you go. So now we are done with the base, except for some of the wiring here. And like I said, we are going to bring the 12 volt, uh, which is on this side, which is great. So we're going to go ahead and bring the 12 volt, and we're going to use their wires for it. So let's go ahead and do that. And so take one of the wires that you cut from the ESC, and... Um, let me see, I want to just tin it again, so, no, go like that. <laughs> I don't think we need to do that, Bryce. Okay, now this is going to be kind of a long cable, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that down, actually. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. There we go, oops. Okay, so there's our positive. You'll probably want tweezers for that. That really burned, that was hot. Okay, now let's do our ground. this part okay great so there we go with those two all right now we know that they are going to attach to this section of the board and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the board this away, right? And that's why you have everything up here. So we want to uh, get the connections to come on the side, right? So first thing we do is, um, this is gonna be the front facing, so let's go ahead and get that down. <sighs> and let me see how I wanna do this. So we're gonna have a little bit of hang over there. That's gonna cross. So we'll go like this. Yep, that'll work. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go ahead, and I think this, if I lay it like this, it'll be fine. Okay. Because I'm going to want these two to kind of land just like that. All right, so I'm going to, hopefully, this is going to come out the way I was hoping. Let's cut that. And let's cut that. And then we'll strip them in ten of them. 
Why'd you tear the Leviticus apart? What happened? Which one are you talking about? these real quick. There we go. Now we've got to tin the board. And we know it's going to go like this. So this will go. The board's going to sit like that. Try to make sure these wires don't look wappy jawed, so yeah, that'll work. Let me just do it this way first. it easy on myself. I'm making this way too difficult trying to get it perfect, but I think what I'll do is just get it done and call it a day. So let me go ahead. First thing you do is obviously put your flux on here. Remember that uh, wherever, remember that this is going to be your positive. You got your plus signs here and your ground is over here. Do not get them reversed, please. And go ahead and apply your solder and just realize, and I wish I could tell you why. I've never got the answer to this. The ground, the negative solder on this board, and on a lot of boards, does not go on as smoothly as the positive pads. And I don't know why, and I wish I did. But it doesn't, for whatever reason. <coughs> it's always been that way. <coughs> All right, so there we go. There's a 12 volt ground, which will go nicely there. And then here is going to be our 12 volt positive, which we're gonna put right here. Now, I'm going to put a little bit more on there, and the board is fine, but I don't want to spend too much more time doing this, so, because it will start to heat up, so let me just see if I can get a little bit more. There we go. All right, that's it. So now the ESC, I'm sorry, the uh, PDB portion of this work is done. There is a 5 volt if we want to use it. I don't see the need right now, so I would say that for the most part, the PDB work is completely done. And as you can see, by the way, this is closed up. The wires sit in nicely. Everything is covered nicely. Board orientation is to the front, so it looks good. Yeah, but it's it's on there, right? Like on the ESC pads, I don't notice it or anything like that. It's just weird to me. I don't understand why it's like that, but, it, you know, um, it is what it is, I guess. Okay, so I did say that we would bring this underneath. So now let me check and see if that's even worth doing. If I did do that, I would have to come around this way. Try to hide the wires, which is no problem. So let me see how that looks. Because the S4 pad is right here, and the ground will be over there, and I think that's gonna be a little short, so I'll separate it. And I think what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm going to make, I don't think it's gonna be a big issue. Uh, I'm going to make the, I'm gonna terminate the ground right here and attach it to the ground on the, um, it does give me a little bit of uh, unwrapped ground. Hold on, let me see what I got. Sorry, let me just see my options here. Because I can come over here, come up. I can actually just go this way and not wrap it around. Save myself about five millimeters in cable. So go here and then here. 
Yeah, that's what I'll do. Never mind. So let me go back with what I initially had said. I'm going to wrap these up. And I'm going to snip it. Actually, I don't know why I did that. All right, so this is, this is really close to here, so that's not a problem. All right, so we're going to take the ground, and we're going to tap it in here because this run is really short. I thought it was longer than that, but it's not. Sorry. Uh, just follow it like this. This would work out pretty good for you, I guess. Okay. Let's tin that up. I was anticipating the runs being longer, but they're not. So I could just use the ground on the PDB. And that's actually going to stay very close. So let me wind this back up real quick. You want to make sure these stay wound up as best as you can. And so that'll be good enough. Okay. And I think I'll do the same here. Just snip off this ground wire, uh, tin it up real quick, and just put it on the ground that's on the PDB. After looking at the runs, they're very close, and therefore there's no need to have to stretch this ground out any longer. I thought it was going to be more of a gap, but it's not. So there you go. Okay, keep them wound as best you can. All right. Same thing will go here. So it's all the same. All right, good. All right, so let's lay that one out to there. We'll cut that right here. So that's good. And that's it. We got one more, which is right here. We're going to do the same thing. And then we'll be able to fasten this board down. That'll be the end of it. As far as that part goes. Let's go ahead and cut this right there. Okay, there we go. Okay, and that's it. PDB is now officially done. Now we can actually screw the flight controller down and finish this portion and to do this just to make it easier on me how hot is it there now it is hotter than... oh yeah yeah we had a terrible heat index today it was brutal but i mean i, I don't mind it I mean, you know but it was it was fairly fairly crappy okay so we're going to pad three so we need to just now prep the top board because we're pretty much almost done now I'm going to go over pads whether I'm going to use them or not I like to just kind of get it all done so let me just go ahead and paint Picasso this thing with okay there we go now I'm going to go ahead and tin the board and this is going to be a quick process because these pads are fairly small so we're we're going to start here's our buzzer and go ahead and tin that one if we want Oops, what am I doing oh my gosh that's old wire not even solder so let's go one and you should be able to make your way around this board 
fairly quickly, right? So there's our pad, right? Okay. And then there's another pad. There's our camera. One, two, three. And then here's another pad. That's pad two. There we go. And then let's go to. Here's our rail of ground. Five volt. S plus will go right there. This would be if you're using a spectrum at 3.3 volts. And there's our LED pad. And then we have pad number one. And that's it. You are now ready to solder the ESC signal. So we'll go ahead and just cut them and go. Here's the number one. Tin it real quick. Hey, Lucia, what's up, bro? How you doing? All right, let's get that ready. Go ahead and take this. Now, that is a very long signal because the uh, silicone sheet thing here got pulled back when the heat touched it. So make sure to trim this down to about one and a half to two millimeters max, or pretty much half of what just exposed right there. All right, so now just take it and just very gently just tap it in. Boop. There you go. Done. Okay. That's all of less than a second there. That one's good. Do the same thing here. Now here, it's going to three, which is right there. So let's go ahead and just cut all this excess out. There you go. Then this one, go here. Okay, this is gonna go to four, so it's gonna go right in front of it, right here, real quick. That's it. All right, and then we're gonna do uh, uh, motor number two, and we're done. All right, so we're just gonna go right there. So I'm just gonna cut it here. Okay. And that's it. So right now, if I was to turn this on, I should be able to um, turn the BTX off. I should be able to spin these motors up or at least see something happen. So let's do a continuity test real quick. Make sure we're not gonna zap anybody out here. And we can see how it looks. Yep, looks good. I've turned the VTX off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the um, AC to DC converter so that I can make sure if there's a short, it doesn't go crazy. And I want to get everything out of the way. Excellent. All right. So that part looks good. Nothing exploded. I like that. Let's get my USB cable and see what I am at. I need this board to sit still for a minute. Not move anywhere. Just noticed 
Alright, so we'll have to use a bigger standoff. One second while I change this standoff here. So let me kind of lift this up and see if I can get enough clearance. There we go. Just do one here. Okay. One here. Just need to raise it. Five millimeters was not high enough to clear the VTX on the bottom of the board on the other side. So I'm going to raise it a millimeter and see if that does it. All right, let's see where we're at. Oh, yeah. That clears it very well. That looks good. All right, so there we go. Everything fits nicely. Uh, the VTX comes on when the um, USB, I mean, like, it looks like it's on. See, like, when I plug in the USB, it's 5 volt, and it's not giving it. But oops, there is a switch right here. So what will happen is you see, how when I, you see how when I apply power? When I apply LiPo power, if that number disappears, it means there's no VTX, right? Boom. Okay, it's off. Right? It only comes on if the light goes off. And so there's that switch here on the side. And this little white switch right here. And that's the switch that you flip to give yourself VTX. Okay, so we have we have a sound here. We have our motors uh, chimed up. So let's see. Let's go into beta flight real quick. Let's see what happens. Uh, so we're here. Boom, boom. There we go. Let me put some of this crap on my desk away. I haven't even started on the coffee that I got, so one second as I clean up a little bit. Remember, this isn't Bryce's desk, so we have to stay clean at least. Do, do, do. Is our quad so far and the build is the hardest part is pretty much done and so now we're gonna just log into beta flight and I'll do a firmware update in a little bit but let's just go to motors actually let me go to configuration and see I'll use multi shot I don't want to hear anything from the peanut gallery about it so shut up and everything else looks good for now save and exit All right, so now um, let's go to our motors and let's see what we got. All right, so I, this is going to need some calibrating. So let's go ahead and do that next. Oh, you know what? Hold on, guys. I have to do updates and everything first. I should have done that first. So hold on. Let me go here because these ESCs need to be flashed. They are not. Uh, let me go to motors. Yeah, that's what I thought. So they don't have the right uh, firmware on here. So let me go and see what firmware we're going to use. And to do that, I'm actually going to pull mine because there is a firmware, a specific firmware I want to use on this one. So let me, let me see. Actually, I'll just connect first. Disconnect, go to BL Heli, connect, where am I at? Mm, is that the right one? I can't remember, but I'll try it. There is a, no, I'm gonna disconnect you real quick. I wanna make sure 
that I have the right. So let me see. That is lightning 20 amp. And that should be right. So let me go ahead and, look and see what happens. Uh, I don't know what cam I'm going to put. That's one thing I have to figure out. Um, I think I have some um, open ones here that I'm going to use, which will be like the run cam and the fox ear, maybe. I don't know. Also got some... Uh, well, I had one right here. I have some lumineers that I need to move, so I may take a lumineer and use it instead. So here's a lumineer. Might as well go ahead and just check it out. These were pretty pricey back in the day, I remember. So I may just use a lumineer. Ooh, that means my wife's awake. Whoa, what? Okay, let me just finish doing the ESCs real quick. So let's see, I believe the lumineer actually just fits in without issue. And that is correct. So the lumineer, probably the lumineer. All right, let me go ahead and do this. Now, I think what I'm going to do on this build, though, is see how I want to handle this. Okay, so one of the things that, one of the pieces that come with this build is the, um, there's another plate that goes on top of this. Let me find it real quick, because I've kind of mushed everything all over the place now. I don't have this crap is, it's just trash. Let's do that. Where are my pieces? Look at that. Okay, so it's got this other piece, right, that comes up. And I think what we'll do is we'll put the receiver on this piece, all right? Um, so let me get the proper standoffs. trying to do here now is I'm trying to give a little bit of space for the top plate to be able to put a screw through it so let me figure by doing this I would get that space so let me just do this real quick and we can disconnect now okay and we can close turn the power off connect. Let me see if I can get this to go. Oh, you know what? Hold on a second. For this one, I have it on mine. I guess I can plug it in, but let me just see. There we go. All right, so now let's see what we've got. Oh, yeah, that's great. Look at that. Golly. That is stout right there. All right, so we've got a reverse one and four. Easy. So we're gonna go ahead, let's go disconnect. Put a PL heli, wrong version, hold on. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and connect again. Nope. Close, I don't need this version, and I'll tell it to read. OK, 
Okay, and we need to reverse one and four. So we're gonna right click on one and go to reverse and click right. And then we're gonna right click on four. Go to reverse and click right. And then I'm gonna go ahead now and see. Um, let's see. We need to check our min and max is here. So 1016, 2020, 1016, 2020, 1016, 2020, perfect. Okay, so we're just gonna write all that up. And that's it. So now we have, we'll disconnect, our motors will reset. I'll just unplug it just because I like to cut power. <clears throat> go ahead and, put that in. and we can see now that everything looks good. Motor should start without any problem. Awesome. And the reason you're hearing that is because this uh, amp pull on the other side is minimized, so uh, you will have it tripped there. All right, so there's that. Now we have to look at if this plate goes right here, right? And we're gonna use, let's say a, I don't know if we can fit a five millimeter screw, maybe. Let me turn off the uh, voltage there now. If I can use a five millimeter screw. And let's get here. Okay, so five millimeter screw is not gonna work. See, as long as it will go to four. Four is what I used on mine, so that's, that, it, help, it holds very well. Let's go ahead and do that. And just kind of get an idea for how this is gonna look. All right, so we're gonna put our receiver up here, right? And then we're going to basically just assemble the rest of this. Uh, this is, this piece will go like so. So this needs to change. Okay, so one. And I know I gotta open this back up, but I just wanna see how it's gonna fit and show you guys how it looks. Okay, so let's put that piece in there. <clears throat> um, actually, uh, let me go ahead and start screwing these in. And we'll use six millimeter screws for that, okay? Can't see it, oh crap, I'm sorry guys. Sorry, I left you guys in beta flight, my apologies. There. Sorry, sorry, my apologies. All right. Uh, okay, uh, let's do this. So I'm just gonna basically assemble these right now and kind of see where we're at. I also get the camera put in and make sure everything fits with it. Okay, now for the camera, we'll use the Lumineer. That's gonna pop in right here. Okay, so we're gonna pop that in right here, and where's my set of screws? Here they are, from Lumineer. Hopefully that should be enough. Let's see, is that a, I guess it's a Phillips. Holy moly, this is just too much. All right, let's get this on there and quit screwing around. Let's throw 
Tell you what, this magnetic screwdriver is driving me nuts, and I am not gonna fuss with this for much longer. I just want to get the damn screw in this camera, and this screw is oddly shaped and does not use a hex bit, so it's all over the place. But I think I'll conquer it here in just a second. I'm just gonna get the right angle on this thing, and I sit. Oh, bitch! Sit still. Uh-huh. Yes, I think that'll do it. All right, at least I got that in now. So this will be the camera that we use, and I will go ahead and bring these two sides together. Stupid thing. All right, Bryce, you take it easy, brother. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm just doing this for size-wise, make sure everything can fit okay. So let me make sure. There we go. Oh yeah, that looks good. That actually works out real well. So let me just put that on there. Seriously. Yes, finally. Damn it. Okay, so we'll finish this off, and this way you guys can get a look for it, get an idea of what it is, and then we can all decide if that is a good build. And I think I think it's gonna work out perfect this way. You got room for your GoPro on the top, or if you want to put top mount battery and not run a GoPro, you can fit it right there, and it'll fly. I mean, it's your um, you'll run your you'll run your uh, lipo through there. That's that. Yeah, that looks good. I'll give you guys a better view of this, a better angle on it in just a second. Okay. So let me just unplug everything real quick. This way I can move it around. Okay. So here's what I've got so far. Um, let me just go ahead and tighten the screw down. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Uh, and so let me do a different camera angle. Oh my God, stop with this. There we go. God, sorry, cameras are iffy. Okay, so this is basically how the build's gonna come out, right? Um, everything, everything looked like it went good. The Luminar camera fits in very nicely in here, all right? Uh, and you can get enough of an angle on this thing without any issues at all. And if you want, you can even move this bar down. Now there is another, you can either, you can adjust your um, uh, stand off and move one here if you want, depending, I guess, on the camera. But to show you what the session would fit like, there it is. Okay, session would fit very good. And then you'll run your uh, strap around. So you would run it like this, right behind your camera here. Okay, and this is how I, I ran mine when I was doing the flight testing on it. Uh, you can't see it. God darn it, I just realized again. Damn it. Here, let's try this. I'm getting tired of you guys can't be able to see. So let's try this. Okay, so there you go. So um, uh, it'll fit just like that. Then you'll put the strap right here. And it's actually very sturdy. Um, so there. So that's what you'd be looking at. All right. Uh, now, the only thing left is to connect those wires, which I'm going to do right now real quickly. And then this build is pretty much done. I mean, everything's already set up. Uh, and then after that, and then there's where your lipo goes, and they give you the cable for that, or the strap I mean for that, which is right here. So you can just feed that through, and then put your lipo underneath if you want. Okay, so that'll go right here. And there it is. Not bad. Um, definitely a good build, I think. Uh, I mean, I know it's a good build. Uh, it flies solid. So now let me just finish the camera side. So that helps. At least that helps us to get the components that we're going to use. So let me go ahead now and open this up and just get that part done. Okay. The rest of this is very easy. 
Uh, the only thing I got to figure out is what receiver I want to use. And um, I'll figure that out here in just a second. Okay, so there's that and that. Let's go ahead and finish this up. And you'll be done. Yeah, it's nice. I, I promise you guys, it's solid. Uh, I, I'm i very pleased with this build right now. Um, okay, so I need to find... I don't need any of that. Okay, so this is the... Uh, Stuff. I need my other wiring for this. There we go. Okay, so here's the wiring for the camera. So what we're going to do is just spin it up as much as you can. You can see how it's going to connect. So it'll go in just like that. And then what we're going to do is, right here on the front is your camera connection, okay? So you've got your voltage and everything right here. So I'm going to go ahead and solder that up. I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see that. It's a very easy, easy thing to do here and you don't need that much wire I'm gonna cut even more than I need just because I can fold it up but uh, let's go ahead and close that thanks man yeah it's it's pretty solid I mean I I definitely when I come up with deals like this you know it's just um, I promise you there's and I, I only say this because I really want people to understand there's no money being made on this thing at all I mean there's 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 a calculated loss taken but the loss taken is, is more of a, hey, I need to move inventory, and the best way to move it is this way. So I want people to know that you're get, whoever gets these, you're getting a heck of a deal. I mean, you really are. Um, and uh, and uh, I, I think that whoever gets this is gonna be very happy with it. And for that price, yeah, you really can't, really can't go wrong. Um, I don't know, I liked it. I liked it when I flew it, so. I didn't get to fly the HGLRC version. I only flew the NACE32 version. HGLRC is going to be even better as far as um, some of the features. Uh, Alright, so there's our power ground and video. And now I'm just going to snip this off so that they're not too long. Let's cut the ground in half. Video looks good. Let's cut the power down. And then we're going to solder these. And then the camera's done. And then the only thing left is the receiver. And there it is. You got it, Dustin. You got it. Not a problem at all. Uh, all right, so let's do 5 volt here. We'll do our video wire here. And then we'll do our ground. Right here. There we go. All right, now our camera's done. That easy. Okay. And to be honest with you, the same thing for the receiver. It's going to be very simple, and I'm actually going to use your camera wire is a good wire to use for other things, and uh, and they use very good wire on this. So this will be actually used for the receiver wire, um, and the receiver wire is going to run from here. So and it's VTX3. So just to let you know, when you do go set up your receiver for S bus or whatever, make sure to use UART3. I think I said VTX3. It's not. It's a TX3. Sorry. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and estimate that no matter how I do this, the worst case scenario is that much water. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And we'll strip this down real quick and then solder those, these onto the board. Oh man, we're actually done at that point. Once that receiver's on, this thing's done. So... Now, uh, I don't think you connect the ESC power cables to the FC. Uh, on this one, you can. Okay, so actually, Rudy, no, you can. And uh, Juan, um, sorry, I didn't see your question earlier. Uh, okay, there's two ways to go about this, right? You do not have to have the PDB. You can wire directly to the AIO flight controller, all right? Um, the frame comes with a PDB. And I'm gonna tell you flat out, 
If ever I have the option to use a PDB, I will use it. Um, I let it take the strain of the issues with the battery. I let it have problems, and um, and uh, I don't put that strain on the flight controller if I can do that. So, especially when we're talking about um, you know a lot of pulls, a lot of high amp pulls, or whatever else, it's just my preference. But that's not how. That's not why it's like that on here. It's on here because it came with the frame. So I'm going to use it. Hope that helps. But yes, you can. You can. That's why those pads are big. You can run your ESC straight to here and here. I just, I try not to do that if I can avoid it. All in one, all in one boards are good, but they still take a beating, and they're not exactly the best at everything. So I tend to try to relieve the all in one from having to do too much. If that makes any sense. Um, all right, all right. So this is gonna be our receiver. Yellow will be our S bus. Let's go ahead and knock that out real quick. Remember that's UR3. And red, we'll go to five volt. And black will go to ground. And now we've got our we've got our receiver wired. Now all we gotta do is just pick the receiver. All right, that's it. So on the board though, the only thing left here is gonna to be to put an antenna. And um, what HTLRC gives you with this board is this antenna. The problem is this frame doesn't give you a place to mount it. So, sorry, I'm trying to pull this out of the damn case. This one. So I'm actually just gonna use one of these 70 millimeter IPEX. So let me grab one real quick. And this is HGRCs as well. And so this will just feed out here. There it goes. I'm not worried about where you put it, but there you go. Okay, 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 everything looks good. Receiver-wise, um, let me go grab a receiver. I'll be right back. I think I'll go with an XM Plus. Uh, a good receiver, so I'm doing an XM Plus on here, okay? I'm going to go ahead and cut that. There we go. And you can just watch this wiring here. Okay, but for right now, just to kind of speed this up, I'm not going to worry about any updates or anything. If you will want to do updates. There are videos online that I have done that show you how to do updates. Um, Right now, the main thing is to make sure that we get this mounted properly. And if you look at the manual that comes with it, it'll show you right here. We are looking at this the exact same way it's laid out. So we have S bus, 5 volt, and ground. And based on the wiring that I said, we're talking about yellow, uh, red, and black. Okay, going in that direction. So we have our top plate, which will go right here.
All right. So there we go. Now we can feed this out this way if we want, just to kind of save us a little hassle there. So now, where is my controller? Here it is, my transmitter. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, solder this here. And we're gonna end up sticking it just like that, okay? Let me go ahead and just knock that out. And this thing is done. That will make it official. So we'll close it up and we'll make sure we have everything good. And then tomorrow will be a flight test on it and we'll get it going. I'll bind it and stitch. Okay, so let's do one more. There we go. Okay, now, a lot of people, I see this come into my shop getting repair. If you're gonna solder and you're gonna be over your equipment, please put a cup, or, I mean, please put a um, something to protect it so that you don't get these flying, um, shooting star looking solder pieces lodging into your flight controller. All right, so there's one, two, three. So those are done. Good for a sip of coffee. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and I already pre-tinned that, but I'll do it now anyway. I mean, uh, put flux on it, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. And remember, it's yellow, red, black. So let's do, let's move this out of the way. Let's get this ready. So yellow will go there, red will go there, and black will go there. Let's go ahead and bring those down. Very quickly, it'll go on without any issue. I hope will be yellow in that order. That's too long. The yellow. Ah, didn't let it cool. The red. You could zip tie these down or double st uh, double tape them or whatever. I'm just not in the mood to do that right now. But if it starts moving on me too much, I will. Okay, and then the last one. This is too much exposed wire also, so let's go ahead and remove that. go and now we are about done so we'll uh we'll put the receiver in a I mean, you could do whatever you want with it really um fry sky doesn't give much uh, stuff with the receivers but like heat shrink or something anyways this is going to sit like that so i'm not going to heat shrink it because i need to be able to work on this one uh, but I am going to use some double-sided tape and just tape it down for the time being. And you can even put a zip tie through it if you want to. Uh, Dustin, I have five of them. I'll be more than happy to hook you up, buddy. Okay. No, I have more than five. All right, so let's get the tweezers. And we will fire this up and see what happens. Sorry, one second. Okay, so the idea is to have this sit uh, in the direction. There it goes, just like that. All right, now you can easily leave it just like this, right, without any hot glue or anything, and run a zip tie around it, which, which because there's ample room in here, wouldn't be a problem. But you have to take everything off to do it. So um, I'm going to do it, I guess, just kind of quickly. Because I need this. I need to still work on this. So let me just put something in here to hold it down. A 
Are these zip ties? There's another one that doesn't have any teeth on it. What a nice waist. Let me just use the black one. Okay. Go ahead and try to get this to at least stay down for the time being. There it is. So now we are good. And now what we'll do is we'll cut this piece off. But you know what? I think I just made it. So uh, it can't be, that, that end cannot be that high because that side plate, those side plates have to go on over that. So one second. I'll just keep this centered in the middle. There we go. Okay, now here it goes. Is the cheaper run cams? Mm. I don't know, man. I mean, I haven't. Honestly, I haven't used them. I uh, stayed away from that whole. I stayed away from that whole deal. I wasn't uh, too thrilled about jumping onto the run cam thing about it. So, I don't know how to answer that. But maybe there's somebody else that does. Let me leave that there for now. Okay, let's put the side plates on. I feel like I'm wasting time here. So, side plates go on. Yeah, that's, yeah, no, that's wrong. I knew there was something up. I'm sorry, I've been staring at this thing and I just realized now that these, these are, you have to turn this piece or else the side plates are gonna go in the wrong direction. That's what was messing me up, I apologize. Okay, and we are almost done. Like I said, I'd come back and redo that um, receiver but I'm going to have to do some work on this anyway. And I don't want to put the receiver in a permanent spot when I know I've got to update it and stuff. Okay, so um, this is the front facing me, which means these have to be the sides. Okay. That's right. There we go. screwdrivers have just had enough. I also think I need glasses, so this isn't helping at all. All right, there we go. Come here. Eventually, we'll see the end of this. Okay, so there we go. So that is actually ripe. This can go here. And this can go here. All right, Dustin, you take it easy, brother. We'll say we'll talk to you tomorrow. Late build, I know. This build sure is taking a while, but first time build, I got to make sure that the video is easy to follow. Okay, so there's that. Now the sides can go on.
Okay. I'm gonna close this up and see what we got. All right, without putting any more stuff in there, that is the fit we're going for. I think this looks really good. Um, again, this will sit right in here nicely. And just make it easy. I mean, I was looking for the antennas here, what to do, and it'd be easy to just time the top. So um, for all purposes, the quad is now done. I mean, you will have to uh, basically turn it on and um, that's it. All the, uh, I mean, I built it obviously, but it's a very simple uh, quad to build. And like I said, you're getting some pretty awesome motors and stuff for this. So enjoy it. Don't let it go to waste, please. But that is the build. So let me tighten it up. Okay, guys. So here you go. Uh, that is the, uh, this is the $100 build. Uh, this is the final, it's been assembled. It's, the wires have all been soldered. Uh, the, this video is gonna show you guys how to do that so you can do it on your own. Um, everything's gonna fit like this, so I think we are gonna go with Luminear cameras as long as we have enough. And so we'll just put them in until we run out. And um, I use the XM Plus uh, from Frost Guy. All right, here's a little pamphlet on it uh, with dual antennas, which I like a lot. And that's it. So um, that's it, okay. So yeah, I'm rambling, I'm tired, I'm rambling. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna cut the video now here because we have to do a tuning we have to do a wire or programming, but um, It'll be online and I'll put these as the descriptions and put the quantity and put the items uh, Remember there's probably gonna be only about eight. Okay, so That's it. We're gonna call it here and then tomorrow. I'll pick up on the um, I've still got to get a Genesis thing put together here and then tomorrow I'll pick up on the beta flight portion of this so uh, check the website out and see if you can get one. Um, and if you want one, you'll be able to pick it up on the site, okay? If you have any questions, guys, I'm sorry. I got really tired all of a sudden. I think I oh, was sitting here just staring at this thing. Uh, this is two hours and 30 minutes almost. Um, it is uh, it's set. I mean, we can power it up real quick, I guess. I'd like to see, I'm afraid that if I turn the VTX on, it's going to um, cut out our feed. But there's everything there. Uh, you got plenty of room for more stuff if you want. So you should be good. Hey, Adam. Uh, yeah, I know. And I'm done. I mean, I'm beat. Um, okay, guys. So uh, check out the build and check out the website. It'll be on the homepage. I'm going to get off this thing right now and go over there and add it just like I promised. Okay? So if you have any questions, guys, give me a shout. Uh, Targetslifefbd.com. If not, say flying. God bless. And we will see you guys soon.